Okay, good morning, everybody. So, I will speak today, in the next minutes, about applying, solving big data-like problems in a very specific domain, but a domain in which we are all familiar as customers, and it applies to everybody. So I will start by 54 seconds introduction about CVIDIA, so I put the next slide, the actual topic in the real context. CVIDIA is a company that specializes in revenue intelligence for telecommunications. By revenue, assurance, by revenue intelligence, we cover revenue assurance, fraud management, and pricing analytics, and we will see today examples of problems of two of these domains. Our customers are big telcos, companies like Telefonica, AT&T, Bell Canada, Deutsche Telekom, British Telecom, etc. these kind of companies all around the world, and we are facing these kind of problems on a day-to-day -day basis, and we are applying solutions to these problems, but obviously, there are many more things that can be done here, there. Think that I'm okay with the 54 seconds, so now to the topic itself. Telcos operators have a lot of data. They have usage data, it can be different kinds of events, CDRs, records for calls, information about SMS, information about what you are doing in the web, browsing, etc. They have location data in which cell you are, via which cell you are speaking, where are you are located. They have DPI data, deep packet inspection data, data about what you are doing when you are using the web. They have customer information. They have a lot of relations with the customer. They know the address. They know the services that the customer is consuming. They know the organization. Do you belong? Do you work for Microsoft, for CVIDIA, for Google? They know your ID. In many cases, they know your email, so they have a lot of information. They have also information about interaction with the customer, payments of the customer, late payments of the customer, complaints of the customer. They have customer social information, to who I call, at what time of the day, who calls me, when, what is the duration of the calls, a lot of information. They can also get data from external sources, Facebook, Twitter, the web, and they know also about what their competitions, what their competitors are doing. So you have there a lot, a lot of information, and obviously you want to use this information. You want to use this information for many things. To prevent churn, to increase revenues, to win over the competition. So the thing is how we use this data, and we will see two examples. So some examples, and we'll focus on the first two, revenue assurance, and I assume that most of you are not aware to what revenue assurance is. In a moment, it will be clear to you. Pricing analytics, design, price plans, and best offers, we will focus on these two topics, but there are many other topics, detection of fraud, increasing of customer satisfaction, prevention of churn, cross and pre-sales, we will connect it with pricing analytics enable targeted advertising, much more information for putting the right ad, and much, much more. Companies are using this information for planning traffic roads. They're using this information for detect from where to where people are traveling to prevent uh, diseases. So a lot of information, a lot of value. Just use your imagination to see what you can do with this information. So our first example, revenue assurance. Basically, we all have the relation with our service providers. We consume some services, make phone calls, browse the web. At the end of the month, we receive a bill. Now, one of the challenges for these service providers, telcos, is to provide us with the right bill. And it's a big challenge. And today in the industry, the average, the international average is that 2% is underbilled. 
So basically, telcos are not billing for everything they need to bill. Moreover, as you all are aware, sometimes they bill too much. For telcos, and I know that you will not believe it, billing too much is more a problem than billing le too less. Why? Because if they bill me too, too much, I will open a dispute with them. It costs them a lot of money to answer my call. I will go to the press, bad publicity. I will be unhappy with them. I may churn. Moreover, regulator may pose penalties. So billing too much over billing is even a greater problem. Now think about the telcos, the big telcos, the AT&T, the Bell, the British telco. How much is 2% of these re revenues? It's a huge amount. The focus of revenue assurance is to detect and to prevent this 2%. So it's a big task, a lot of money behind that task. And later you can see this about how much they managed to recover and why. Less interesting for our topic, but it puts an emphasis on prevention of leakages, not the topic of our conversation today. So let's le look at one case, one of the problems that causes over and under billing. Basically, a network, an operation is very complex. You have many switches that are generating events. You have a signaling system that is supposed to give you information. All these events pass a lot of phases until they arrive to the billing system. In some cases, the switch generate partial events that need to be correlated in unified to a single event, for example, an event of a single call. In other cases, you need to split an event to several sub-events. There is a long transformation process. Normally, it's done, par large parts of it are done in a place called the mediation. And in this transformation, in the information going from the switch somewhere here until the billing system, many, many things can happen. You can lose events. You can duplicate events. You can create events that re didn't really exist. You can drop essential information from the events. So basically, our first task is very simple. The events that should have been generated by the switch verify that they arrive correctly to the billing system. So you need to take the information from all the switches, combine them applying the business rules, and do a simple comparison and check is the result what the billing system received. So it sounds straightforward, and if we spoke about one, two million records, everything is great, but now we enter to the big data issue. In one of our customers, we are speaking about an input of 12 billion records per day. So the amount is relatively big. We are speaking about finding discrepancies between sets of 40 billions of events. Why? Because not all the information arrive in the same day. There are laps, there are gaps between the days, etc. So we are speaking about comparing two very big lists of events. To make things worse, we are not speaking about an exact matching using a simple key. That would be nice. It's not the issue. Sometimes there are differences. Some of the information that we may like as a key is missing. In some cases, we have difference in the clock, so the same time of starting the call here and there is not equal, etc. So we need to detect also the best match. Not exact match, but best match. And it needs to be cost effective and it needs to be robust, it needs to be very scalable. Why? Because sometimes the information will be delayed. Sometimes instead of receiving 12 billion records per day, you will receive after two days 24 billion records. You need to process everything. And after we detect the problems, we need to be able to investigate it, to give it to a human expert to do the investigation. So a nice challenge even though everything is structured, so we are not meeting the unstructured flavor of big data, it's still very big data. So what is the solution that we applied? And first, why didn't we apply a classical big data stack? The very good reason is that we started to do this eight, nine years ago, the stack was not there. So we have to invent the wheel instead of using an existing wheel. And 
some phases. First, we take all the information and we pass it through a mediation, and here we split the information into three entities. The first entity, files. Basically, files of information. The second entity, a database in which we contain several things. We contain relevant indexes to the files, so they permit me to go to the right position in the files and also detailed records in some cases, we'll speak about it, and an OLAP cube. An OLAP cube permits me to do very quick aggregations, splitting among very different dimensions to find discrepancies at the aggregation level. By using these three things, we are able to do what we call spot and zoom. We spot a place where we suspect that there is a problem, then we we'll zoom and we do a detailed comparison. Uh, now one thing, and I think it's the most important thing that you should take from this 20 minutes talk, we did not implement a general solution from comparing two big lists of information and doing fuzzy matching. Even though we use a lot of algorithms and they are very important, a very important part here is to use domain knowledge. We have knowledge about what informations arrive, when it arrives, what is the meaning of the information, etc. If you need to take anything from these 20 minutes is use algorithms, apply the algorithms according to your problem, but also use domain knowledge. Using appropriate domain knowledge can reduce the problem by a lot of factors of magnitude. Use it, otherwise you will not be able to solve such problems doing it in an effective way. The second example is design and offer of price plans. So basically, you, we have the operator and we have the marketing guys there and they want to come up with a new brilliant idea about what is the next plan. And it, they need to design this plan and they need to check, okay, what will be the effect of this plan? Will it increase my revenues? Will it decrease my revenues? how it compares to the plans of the competitions, etc. The old approach was, let's do a statistical model of the usage journal network, let's use this model, do a quick calculation, a rough estimation, and everything will be okay. Life proof that it's not good enough. The models are not good enough, so the actual approach in the industry is take a big enough sample, and we're speaking about samples of hundreds of thousands of users, and do a detailed analysis from each of them to see how this new plan will impact each of these customers. Again, a lot of processing, we'll see the volumes in a second. The next thing is you have these new great plans, now you need to decide what to offer to which customer. You can do the offering in very easy ways just to publish it in your website. You can tailor the offer to say, call a customer and tell him, and tell him, uh, you know, I have this great plan for you, perhaps it's better for you to switch there, and you can tell him, okay, this will be the advantage of this new plan for you. You, can, you need, if you take this kind of approach, to calculate in advance, will the customer accept this plan? For two reasons. First, if you nag the customer too much, you call him each day with a new plan, he will be very tired of the operator. Second, it has a cost for you, so you need to res uh, reduce your false positive. So what is the goal that we are having here? First, to increase the customer satisfaction, reduce churn and increase revenues. The method is design new price plans, estimate their impact on the organization and on the users, and propose the next best solution offered to the customer. And when we speak about next best, you know, there is a winning plan. Charge zero and everybody will come to your operator. So you need to have a trade-off between what is best for the operator and what will be best for the client, considering the competition. So what are the volumes that we are speaking here? We are speaking about doing all this process using 54 billion records, so a big number, taking into account 30 million subscribers, an average of 10 events per subscriber per day, and an history of six months. 
it needs to be very cost effective. You don't want to spend in this too much money, especially in hardware. You need to analyze multiple price plans in parallel, take into account when you do billing, you use one price plan per customer. When you do this, you're t testing 20, 30 price plan in parallel. And you need to focus the right plan to the right customer. So using a regular billing system will not work. It will be too costly, so we need a different solution. What is the information that we are taking into account in this solution? First, rated CDRs, the events, the customer data, the invoice data. And then we are taking into consideration the price plans, the new price plans that marketing is designed, and the competitor's price plan. The first phase will be to take all this information to test the new price plans and to decide what new price plans we want to add to our inventory of price plans. After we do this, we need to tailor the right plan, price plan for the right customer. And in many cases, we need to do it in near real time. The customer is calling the call center. I'm not an happy customer. The rep says, great, I have this new great offer for you. So it needs to be quick. In some cases, we can process it as a batch. From the point of view of the information flow, very similar to what we saw in revenue assurance, we have all the information coming outside. Parts of this information will go to fi files with indexes that we store in a database. Part of this information will go, especially reference table and like that, to the database itself. Then we will split the task among rating engines each rating engine will work at the same time at one customer looking in parallel about 20, 30 price plans for this customer. We'll do all the calculations. When he finishes, he will move to the next customer, etc. And then we will unify the results. Uh, remind some classic big data methodology. Uh, regretfully, when we started to do this, the stacks were not there. Today we are thinking about how to start using these stacks. And then we have these price plans. Either we can suggest to which customers to offer these, or we can give this information to a campaign management product that uses this information as an input to all the management of the campaign of offering the right price plan to the customer. And here we can do several things, just starting by offering a better plan to the customer. And a better plan is both for the operator and for the customer. We can use this to do a kind of upsell. You know, if you take this plan, perhaps you should take also this feature, pay $5 more, and you will be really, really happy. Of course, we are all happy, so it's working. And I can use it also to do some kind of cross sale. You know, I see that you look a lot of sport. So I have this deal with this uh, gym, and you can also buy a subscription there, and everybody will be happy. So the operator can use his data to give both to the customer more value, both to himself more value. Using the data in the right way is very important. It's very computational extensive, and moreover, not just the CPU, a lot of communication overhead. So you need to consider how to do it in a very efficient way. Again, my highlight from this talk, using a very good algorithm will take you half the way. Using domain knowledge will permit you to really solve the problem. So thank you very much.